peace and love and welcome or welcome back to my life and all the things that are happening in it that I find act as a mirror to the people that somehow find these videos. So I did kind of already start to record this like a couple seconds ago. Um, but I had to restart because somebody came outside and I'm still Saturn returning how to, that's what I'm saying. Learning is I'm still Saturn returning how to just keep talking when other people come out and do their own thing. Although sometimes I do just like to have my own space where no one's around so I can just share what I want to share without feeling like anyone is affecting what I'm saying, even though I should be doing that anyway. And that's something I'm claiming and I'm moving into, but anyhow, hello. So the inspiration, first of all, hello, look at my new hair. Oh my gosh, I did it. Locked up. They won't let me out. They won't let me out. I'm locked now. Yes. It has happened. It is here. The moment has happened. And the reason for this video, the reason why you're sitting and chilling with me in the van that me and my partner are currently working on and has become my new sacred space outside of my meditation space is because uh, I recently decided within the last couple of months to lock my hair. And I wanted to make a video about my thoughts and processing on this choice and decision, not only for myself, but for others who may be considering to lock their hair or others who are on just, and we're all on our own journey towards, I'm going to open the door a little bit with my foot. We're all on a journey towards um, becoming closer to ourselves and our truest self. And we're all in stages and phases of growing and learning and becoming who we always were, but we were programmed to release or conditioned to let go of and finding that again. And so today I just, I literally just today on the summer solstice, the day I'm recording, uh, went to flourish the lock spa in, uh, I guess you'd call it Virginia beach, <laughs> Virginia beach, Virginia. And, um, Lotus was such a beautiful being to have the opportunity to be gifted with her her healing hands and her healing energy and her emotional energy and just her presence and a sharing space like I thought I might just be quiet and like just have my hair locked for a couple of hours but really we talked like almost the entire time and just sharing downloads and things that have been happening and we've been learning and shifting and growing through both cancers um, and learning a lot about ourselves through talking about ourselves and then the other person learns from the person saying that you know how that goes anyway so as I was sitting and talking with her um, I really got inspired to make a video about it because I was like I feel like this is something that is useful for any of us as humans um, to do and to be processing and to do our shadow work and to release things that are no longer healthy for us and so I was in there and she, you know we were talking about my hair journey talking about our just journeys in general and the basic meaning for the title of the video is instead of cutting off all my hair this year, which I've been doing the last couple of years for my birthday, I decided to lock it and what that really means to me. And like I said, some of this is just for me to say to myself so I can process, but also as a, a means or a way for you to have a mirror cast onto you about things you may be processing within whatever year you're in of your life. So the last couple of years, uh, it's interesting. I feel like I'm interviewing myself. The last couple of years I had chosen to cut off my hair during my birthday for many reasons. Uh, the very first time I cut off my hair, it had already gotten like, they basically looked like this. Like I used to just twist my hair. I got it to like down to here, uh, without stretching, like right here, stretching here, not stretching here. And they would just, they were, they're beautiful. I loved them. I, I was going through a lot of shadow work at that time within my relationships and partnerships and with myself and Pluto had just entered into my first house as well as I don't think Saturn was there yet but it was getting it to a critical degree close to my ascendant and so I knew things were changing I knew things were shifting within me and it felt like it was time to cut it all off my ends had started getting frazzled and started like to slowly wear up the hair strand and I didn't know how to stop it. I also didn't know how to trim it to maintain it. I have a lot of hair, so I cut it all off and I truly felt like in cutting it all off, it was like a, you know, a rebirth. Our, our hair holds energy, holds memories. It holds those things within it. It is alive. 
it's also an antenna. And so I cut all that off and at first I was really excited. I was, I felt new. I felt alive again. I felt I can start over. This is a new slate for me. Okay, cool. So then go through that whole year, which was the year that I actually made this YouTube channel, <laughs> the year, um, I decided to stop working at Whole Foods. I went to Colorado to work at a crystal shop and live with my grandfather. Unhealthy home environment, time for me to leave. So then I go live out of my car. I think I'm gonna go buy a van. They stop answering, but now I'm in Sedona, so it's not really that big of a deal. Living out of my car, driving across the West Coast, wind up in Florida, then everything closes down the next year, because it was like 2019 to 2020. So that year, my hair has my hair has been growing. I haven't cut it. I was living in my car, living in the van. It was getting longer, but I wasn't really taking care of it. I wasn't really maintaining it. I wasn't really spending any time with my body. I was just kind of floating in the world, floating on the earth, floating through my experiences. And it still felt good because I was still connecting to Gaia, and that's how it would ground. But all those moments in between, I wasn't paying attention to me. I wasn't paying attention. How's my body doing? I should probably wash this. I should probably cleanse myself. And so sitting with that rec recognition of, okay, so I'm still not technically taking care of me, even though I'm out here and I'm having all of these experiences and I'm gaining a lot from them the physical temple is still so important. And that's something I've been learning even just recently to take care of my physical temple. So that year, um, I decided to cut off my hair again and it had gotten really big, but not very healthy. Not, I had not been taking care of it. So for that year, it's also on the channel. I talk about everything I had learned that year as I was cutting off my hair. This year was a little different. Um, and that was last year. That was the year before last. So then this time last year, because I always cut it on my birthday, this time last year I cut it again. Wow, I didn't realize how many times I cut it. So yeah, I cut it again last year. And when I cut it last year, it was because the last relationship I had been in was um, not one that I wanted to hold within the memory of my hair, within my being, to carry with me. And something that I've learned through watching videos about the locking community and about the lock energy, of locking your hair because it is an antenna, spiritual antenna, is that as you are as you are uh, locking your hair and strengthening those antenna, you are holding all of the experiences and the memories that you are creating with that hair as it grows, as well as being able to be receptive to the things that are occurring outside of yourself, like psychic little antenna reaching out and feeling what's around you. And so I cut off all my hair last year. And when I did it last year, I was really grateful for the recognition of more of a conscious awareness as to why I truly wanted to cut it. The years before, I just kind of was like, oh, I'm not taking care of it. Oh, I'm not taking care of it. Last year when I cut it, I was like, I don't want to hold those memories on my body. So I'm going to cut it off. So I cut it all off super short, like basically down to my head. And I didn't mind it. It was easy to take care of and easy to maintain. But I'd also been working on connecting more to my feminine energy again because I had been in my masculine for so long and kind of subconsciously but also intentionally been pushing into masculine and so this year the, the main difference for me um, in choosing not to cut it off because I've been growing it out throughout this entire year I did better at taking care of it and maintaining it for the most part and then I did some box braids I really loved the box braids and the box braids earlier this year represented a time when I was really connecting to light language. I was connecting to some more of the spiritual aspects of myself that laid unawakened within me. And uh, the box braids really represented the time of like, oh, we're just, we're just out here. We're just out here. I felt fully immersed in the experience of myself and life and spirit and earth. And during that time was when I had a past life memory come through of having locks, of having like a full head of locks. And then I went to a, uh, we w I was in a sound healing ceremony, sound healing session with the uh, instructor who be who helped me and my partner, oh my gosh, who helped my partner and I become sound healed certified sound healers. And in becoming certified sound healers, there was a session we did with him. He would guide us through and there was a, past life regression that he did for us and again the locks were there the locks have been waiting and so 
I'd been sitting with these things for this year and I was like, I don't know if I'm ready to do that. I don't know if I'm ready to do that. I don't know if I'm ready. And I didn't, wasn't sure if I was ready or not, mostly because, well, first to lock your hair is to like really, you're, you're, you're claiming that hair, you're holding it, you're cementing it, you are aware of it, you're taking care of it. But I felt like my hair had been asking, my hair had been asking to lock, my hair had been asking for locks, my hair had been wanting it. Like, it's almost like if there are certain things that always happen, not always happen, but there are certain things that you're, in your lifetime you're supposed to experience, like those little milestones, it felt like locking my hair was already one of those milestones that was waiting for me, and I just didn't know it yet. Fast forward to here right now, on the eve of my next birthday, and instead of cutting off all my hair, I just decided to lock it to start cementing the experiences that I'm having here, to hold the wisdom of the experiences that I'm experiencing, and to really ask myself to be more present within my body, to be more present within my container, within my temple, to give myself love, to adorn myself, to treat my temple your temples, my crown, uh, with care and with pride and with joy and passion and light and love and um, a full expression. Just I'm just shaking around my hair and today having this accompany me into my next birth birth year, my next solar return feels right. So I'm not going to make this video super long. I'm only at 11 minutes, which isn't pretty bad for me. I can talk a long time, so I'm going to try and condense the next segment very quickly. So what I have learned since my last birthday to this one is all of the things that I'm still learning how to do, which is like set boundaries to assert myself, not in a forceful way, but to just hold my energy and not dim my light based on who I'm around, be able to clearly and consciously speak my truth and not be afraid of what other people think about it or how it's going to make them feel or if I'm hurting anyone's feelings because my truth isn't aimed intentionally to hurt anyone. It's simply just my truth. So I'm still learning to do these things. Um, definitely learned the power of informing and communicating clearly with others, especially if you haven't created any kind of clear communication with others, recognizing the importance of recognizing that my energy does affect other people and I'm not like just going un like unaffecting people in my environment, really learning the importance of clear conscious communication, just like my partner said he was learning. Uh, those are, these are all things I'm still learning. What I have definitely learned and integrated is that just because I've experienced things within my previous relationships or things that I had to put on, like I kind of consider it like adding on a shield or an armor, even though I've had to add those things onto myself in previous relationships, I can take those off. Those do not belong to me. I do not claim them or own them. I can always simply be Talisa, no matter what experience I'm in, and I don't need to have to alter that. And that's been very shown to me through my partnership with my husband and so it's like oh these are things I don't need anymore I'm releasing these I'm taking these off I can just be in my energy I can just be myself I can just speak my truth and really being presented all the opportunities and challenges to do that especially when children are present and when you're trying to work from home when you're creating on YouTube and it's not necessarily seen as like something like a typical work environment it's about learning to change the, the language that you use I don't say, okay, I'm going to go make a YouTube video. I'm going to go to work. I'm working and really claiming and understanding that if I don't value my time, why would anyone else value my time? And learning to value my time, learning to value my space, learning to value my wants and needs and desires and not always put other people before myself. So these are all things that I've learned in this last year. I've learned the power of unconditional love for my husband because he has a huge heart and has really been holding a space here in his home environment for the last seven years and I don't know how he's done it. I don't know if I could do that. I'd probably go crazy. So like really learning um, the hearts of other people, the power of being vulnerable, being open, sharing how I feel, sharing my truth, sharing my desires. Uh, if we don't speak those things that we want or desire, then how are they ever supposed to come to us? How are we ever supposed to um, align with what we desire? If we don't sit and think about what it is we're desiring, why we desire it, and you know, 
it's kind of just one of those things that I have definitely been sitting with this year and sitting with what I desire, you know, at the beginning of this year, or even if we're going based on my birthday and it's now my next birthday, the things that I desire from my last birthday to now are completely different. I really just want to have a home that I can call my own, my own home and safe place environment where I can be a steward of my land, where I can have chickens, where I can teach people about hemp and teach people about clean, clear, conscious water and the importance of hemp being the answer and water being the cure, where I can travel the world and share beautiful places and eat beautiful food and uh, really just be like an example of the life I wish to see and wish to be in, a, a place of peace and love within all of my experiences. And even if things aren't peaceful and loving when you're experiencing them, you can hold that energy within yourself. So yeah, I learned a lot this year. This next birth year, this next solar return of mine, I am still in my Saturn return, so I'm really feeling it, but I'm still grateful for everything that has occurred within this last year because they've all taught me something about myself and taught me about my strength and my resilience and my love and my kindness and my joy and my ability to keep going and to reshift and to know when there's a lesson for me and to know when I need to set a boundary and to know all these things so that I can be prepared for my next year. And I truly believe every solar return we are supposed to be learning things we are supposed to continue evolving there's supposed to continually be that change within us as we continue to rise to our highest selves so if there's anything you can learn from this halfway why i got locks halfway what i've learned this year for my birthday halfway me just kind of sharing and expressing things i'm going through is that if you sit in reflection of just from this time last year and think about everything that you've experienced i guarantee you You'd be amazed at how much you've been through, how amazed at how resilient you are, amazed at, wow, I'm still going, I'm still joyful, I'm still happy, I'm still pushing through and I'm still finding time for me. And if you're not, finding the time to do that now and recognizing how important it is to do those things. Important is to say, I'm going up, I'm going upstairs for an hour. I'll be back down later. And not asking for permission simply informing, hey, I'm going to go upstairs for an hour and spend some time by myself. Don't feel bad about it. Don't think about it. Don't give any other reasons. Just go and do it. This, this year, not just for me, but for everyone collectively, is really about learning to care for yourself. This is another big lesson for me because I'm always trying to help other people and do other people's work for them. And they're like, oh, I noticed this and blah, blah, blah. Stop focusing on everyone else's work and focus on your own work. If we all focus on our own work, everyone's good. And that's something I've, I'm letting go as a Virgo Mars. It's not easy. It's Capricorn rising, Venus and Taurus. I'm learning to just focus on me and my healing and my center. And in focusing on myself, I trust that if I'm capable, other people are capable. If I'm capable of doing these things, they're capable of doing these things as well. And releasing the responsibility of needing to take care of everyone else and not take care of myself. Yeah, these are things I'm moving into this year, and I'm grateful for this next year. I'm ready for this next year. I know it's going to be a pivotal year for myself in terms of, like, especially Saturn being present with me uh, and saying, okay, have you learned this? Have you learned this? No, she hasn't learned it. Give her that test again. Has she learned this? I'm ready for those tests, and I understand the reason for them. It's not for my detriment. It's for my abundance. It's for my prosperity. It's for uh, a better version of me. So, yeah. That's all I'm going to say. It's still a little bit longer than I would have liked it to be, but I trust that those of you who truly resonate with me and what I'm saying or really wanted to hear and hold space for me are still here. So thank you. I appreciate you. You are seen. You're appreciated. And I trust that whatever you're experiencing and going through right now during whenever you watch this or even if you watch it in time, that you trust that your light is important and it's important to honor your light and to shine your light and to hold your light and to share your light, to ground your light, to really focus on yourself and to love yourself in order to do anything else within this physical reality. So yeah, these are my new locks. Very grateful, very ready to shine. I'm going to let myself shine and I trust that you will let yourself shine as well. So yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I trust you'll stay open to the signs and the synchronicities that you will be receiving within your now moments whenever you're watching this. And until I see you again, I am sending you peace and I'm sending you love.